In the aftermath of the death of Glustrad by his own hand, the average resident of the Circle of the World would have believed that a peaceful world lay on the horizon. This future would be forged by the remaining sons of Uz, who would continue the great work of their father in leaving the world a better place than they found it. However, as with many events which occur throughout the First Law series, the darkest possible course was to be taken. The world was once more to be cast into disarray and discord due to the conflict between brothers, and in their stead, lesser men were to take the reins in guiding the nations of the Circle of the World forward. In this episode, we will detail this conflict, which was to forever alter the course of history, and provide the basis for all future conflicts which were to devastate the Circle of the World going forward. After Glustrod's destruction, the three brothers, Juvens, Canedius, and Bedesh, were left alone in the world they had inherited from their father Uz. However, the number of powerful individuals capable of shaping the course of the future was soon reduced from three to two, as Badesh died at some point after the journey to Shabulian. The chronicles do not record how Badesh died, and the manner of his death remains unrevealed as of yet in this series. After Badesh's demise, the two most powerful beings who remained were Canedius, who stayed holed up in the House of the Maker, tinkering with his various experiments and inventions, while Juvens took a different course of action. Juvens took on a number of apprentices who would collectively come to be known as the Order of the Magi. All of his knowledge of the usage of the high art was set out in his book, The Principles of Art, which proved to be the building blocks of his tutelage. In order for one of his students to earn the staff, which was the symbol of their craft, each apprentice would have to read the Principles of Art, and in their own time, eventually create their own copy of this mighty tome. As Juvens, possessing the blessings of his father Uz, was the only individual within the school capable of mastering and utilizing all elements of the high art, his students specialized in their own niche areas. Juvens founded the Order of Magi with good intentions, but soon trouble began brewing within its ranks. When a feud amongst his apprentices, Baez and Kalul, erupted, Juvens took action to nip the argument in the bud. Bayaz was sent to one of the great libraries which Juvens had constructed in the far north, while Kalul was sent to the great southern library, ensuring the two combative magi were as far away from each other as possible. However, this would have unexpected consequences, as both parties would continue to plot their revenge in the far extremities of the world, a stark contrast to Juvens's preferred outcome. Bayaz would continue to seek out greater power, power which would give him the upper hand in any future conflict with Kalul, which led him to the House of the Maker. In Canedius, Baez gained a new master, one who could teach him aspects of the magic of the world outside of the realms of the High Art. Baez moved to the realm which would one day become the heartland of the Union. Here he became apprenticed to a new master. Yet here the impatience and arrogance at the heart of Baez would come to the fore. Although Canedius utilized Baez's proficiency in the high art for his work, he was far more unwilling than his brother Juvens to share his secrets. Baez grew increasingly angered with the Maker for refusing to properly teach him, and soon set out on his own to garner the knowledge he so sought. This led Baez to search through the house of the Maker in order to glean what might be of use in his persistent rivalry with Kalul. In so doing, Baez stumbled upon the greatest secret of the Master Maker, the existence of his daughter, Ptolemy. For the entirety of her existence, Ptolemy had been left alone in the darkness of the House of the Maker, and by the time Baez had come across her, she had never once spoken to another person. Canedius had created her for a sole purpose, to aid her father in his work within the Hall of the Maker. In essence, she served as little more than a tool in her father's machinations. In Canedius's great works, she would handle the materials which only those belonging to the bloodline of Mighty Uz could carry without being destroyed. Ptolemy was also a beautiful being, which was reflected by the innocent kindness of her soul. Before long, she and Baez became lovers. In the tender embrace of Baez, the first man she had ever spoken to and would ever love, Ptolemy revealed the plans of her father, Canedius. The Maker had searched far and wide, bringing items from all across the circle of the world to his house. These relics of a time long past were fragments from the other side, brought into the world when demons still roamed far and wide. Canedius planned to use these artifacts, 
tapping into their being and imbuing his machines with this immense power. He had found some success in this regard, however in doing so he was effectively breaking the first law. Baez, having witnessed the destruction of Alcus due to Glustrod's foolishness, deigned it necessary to tell Juvens. However, fearing for Ptolemy, he tarried on delivering the news. This lack of haste brought with it further devastating consequences, as Canedius returned from his travels and found the young couple together. His illicit affair discovered, Baez would barely escape with his life and fled towards his former master. Baez eventually reached the domain of Juvens, who despite the betrayal of his first apprentice, could still not bear to turn him aside. Juvens provided shelter for his young disciple, who presumably informed him of Canedius's plans to break the first law in his tinkering. Shortly after, Canedius, furious at Baez's trespasses upon his daughter, was soon also standing before the doors of the house of Juvens. The two brothers would argue, and when Baez returned to his master's home, he found Juvens dead, slain by the maker himself. It is believed that in order to lay low the master of the high art, Canedius made use of the divider, a weapon he himself had created. This weapon resembled an axe in composition, with a long handle which was made from tiny tubes of metal, which twisted and wrapped around each other. The end of the divider was composed of a flattened piece of metal with small holes and a long thin hook curving out from it. This mighty weapon, which was likely created using the power of the splinters of the other side left over from the old times, brought to an end the life of wise Juvens. This story had been handed down through the years by Baez, who brought the tale of Juvens's death to the Order of the Magi in an attempt to secure himself a leadership role within the organization after the void left by his master's death. He rallied to his side ten of the eleven within the Order of the Magi. All but Kalul would accept his leadership in the pursuit of revenge. Kalul would not believe the version of events detailed by Baez, and instead lay the blame for their master's death at the feet of Baez himself, returning to the south to continue his plotting. Undeterred, Baez led the Order of the Magi in force against Canedius, bringing them to the very gates of the imposing House of the Maker. This gargantuan structure at the very center of the circle of the world was nigh on impenetrable, even to incredibly talented wielders of the high art. There were no windows in the unfathomably high walls of the structure which resembled a mountain more than it ever could a dwelling. The only weak point in the entire structure, if one could call it that, was the door to the house of the maker. This square of burnished dark metal consisted of a set of two circular etchings. The circles were further composed of large and small letters, utilizing a spidery script, which ensured that the entrance was warded from any potential aggressors. As a result, the entirety of the power which the Order of the Magi could bring to bear was insufficient to make even a dent in the defenses of the Maker. This would cause Bias to turn to his greatest asset, not his mastery of the high art and certainly not his burgeoning leadership skills, rather his base cunning of which he had vast reserves. The silver-tongued first of the Magi poured honeyed words into the ears of the naive Ptolemy and convinced her to open the door to the House of the Maker. The gate now open, the Order of the Magi rushed forward, unaware of just what awaited them. Indeed, while the house was vast by any ordinary perceptions, the building itself was capable of altering the very core concepts of space and time. This gave the Maker an advantage which evened the playing field, as the Magi were forced to battle Canedius chamber by chamber, dealing with his traps and inventions as they passed through the depths of the great house. In the earliest element of the confrontation, the Magi Zacharis and Corneal were badly injured and rendered incapable of continuing the fight. Worse yet, Anselmi and Brokentooth were laid low by the Maker in the brutal fighting within the house, leaving the order further depleted. As the conflict began to draw to its final bloody conclusion, Baez was left isolated from the rest of his order and forced to face the Maker Canedius alone. Baez stood upon one end of a bridge high upon the tower, with Canedius and his daughter Ptolemy taking up their position on the opposite end. The two men fought, bringing to bear all of the strength which remained to them following the brutal chamber-by-chamber -chamber battles which had been waged within the bowels of the tower. During the dying embers of the fight, Canedius supposedly threw his daughter from the bridge, from where she would endure a long fall and a crushing death at the foot of the House of the Maker. 
Bayaz, empowered by the loss of his love Ptolemy, fought on valiantly despite the superior strength of his adversary, who had held the order of the Magi at bay with his might alone. In the end, Bayaz was to triumph and cast his adversary from the bridge to follow his daughter to her death. At least this is the official story that the first of the Magi has told in the years that followed. Other accounts of the duel persisted too. For example, Yulwe, a Magi who was at the battle, recounted that he saw Canedius fall first, then Ptolemy. However, it was Bias's version which gained traction and was accepted as the established truth for generations to come. Canedius and Ptolemy were both buried beneath the shadow of the House of the Maker, and Bias would take the keys of the house, leaving it sealed for the generations to come. So came to an end the last son of Uz, and with his death, the world was lessened, with new nations arising and the disciples of Juvens left to manipulate events from the darkness. A darker world, no longer fueled by the possibility of innovation and the betterment of mankind. Rather, a world committed to a continued and undeniable descent, driven by the unwillingness of the Magi to see beyond their own petty divisions and fashion a new world for those who relied so dearly upon their stewardship. However, this is a tale for our next video on the history of the First Law series, which will focus on the construction of the Union and the Gurkish Empire through the machinations of Bayaz and Kalul, respectively. The next few videos in this series will be dedicated to the efforts of the Magi to forge a new path forward in the circle of the world, but we're planning to cover the battles of many other fantasy, sci-fi and space opera universes, so make sure you have subscribed and pressed the bell button. Please consider liking and sharing as it helps immensely, and don't forget to comment. We will try to read and respond to every comment as we want to know what you think about this video and which videos you hope to see in the future. This is the Wizards and Warriors channel and we'll catch you on the next one.